Bibles out, Isaiah um, chapter 53, verses 1 through 5, and then 1 Corinthians 1 and 18. Once you find Isaiah 53, verses 1 through 5, I'm asking you to stand to your feet. While you're standing um, in the Socorro in the Socorro National Park in California, there's a big tree that stands 275 feet high and is 36 feet in diameter. It's called the General Sherman. It's known as the biggest tree in the world. Um, Today, I want to talk to y'all about a tree that reaches from heaven all the way down to earth. It is the cross of Calvary that I want to talk to y'all about. It extends all the way throughout eternity. The cross of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Calvary's tree. That's what I want to minister to y'all about today. So while you're um, turning um, to Isaiah 53, verses 1 through 5, we're going to read this in concert. I'm grateful to God for everyone who serves in our church and who helps and who gives, who prays, who just assists us in so many different ways. Thankful to God for our praise and worship. Um, thankful to God for our singers and um, musicians and media and sound and ushers and children's workers and um, teenager, teenage workers and nurse, everybody. I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm grateful for the things that people do that goes unnoticed. Um, people do things in this church that that gets no recognition, and um, I'm grateful to God for it. Um, know that if you don't get recognized by man, God has a better recognition for you, <laughs> better recognition. Um, I mean, just the little things, and, and I don't know who's doing it, but I, I'm so grateful that every now and then the, the sound and the media people come in, and we find a whole bag of batteries back there. Um, who in here bringing the batteries? Tasha, that's you. Thank you so much. Um, now I know. <laughs> um, just little things like that. We, you know, we spend about forty to fifty dollars a month on batteries, um, and just little things like that, man, is 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 a blessing. Um, and I and I and there's so many other little small things that is done. I, I'm just grateful to God for you. Um, those who are watching, grateful to God for you. Um, I, I know there's so many people watching who hit me up. Um, I pray that God has a word for you. Um, to the Osteens, Pam and Dean, we're praying for you. Um, Pam, I, I went to um, Miss um, John Betsy's um, um, husband's um, wake on last night. I want you to know we're praying for your family. Um, spoke briefly with your dad. He was crying. He had me crying. And um, he said, I, you, you know, I'm Pam's daddy. And um, I said, I know. And um, I said, if you find any more wonderful people like her, um, send them over to Victory Christian Center. <laughs> send them over to Victory Christian Center. And um, once, once you know we love you, I know y'all freezing cold. I think y'all up in Chicago. Uh, but it's good and warm down here. Um, we about to go to the beach, so um, it's, it feels real good down here. Uh, my cousin Katrina, they're getting a foot and a half of snow. Um, and I, I made her feel real bad and told her we on our way to the beach this week, and she don't like me at all. All right, Isaiah 53, verses 1 through 5, if you have it, say amen. All right, let's read these verses out loud in concert. Let's read. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Amen. Amen. One other verse, 1 Corinthians verses 1, or chapter 1 and verse 18. 1 Corinthians 1 and 18, King James Version is what we'll be looking at. Is in the New Testament. Make sure you're not looking in First Chronicles. 
or if I was a presidential candidate, I'd say one Corinthians. Oh, Lord Jesus. One Corinthians, two Corinthians. Lord Jesus. You find out real quick who didn't go to church. <laughs> All right. Verses, verse, just verse 18 is what we're going to read. Um, 1 Corinthians 1 and 18. Just one verse. Let's read it out loud in concert. Read. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. Amen. It is the power of God. I want to talk to y'all from this subject on today about the power of the cross. The power of the cross. Let's bow our heads briefly for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you for this time. Speak to us today as only you can. And we'll give your name glory, honor, and praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. The power of the cross. Um, I'm not a stickler for scary movies. Um, but one particular type of movie I loved when I was growing up was black and white Dracula movies. Um, I, I, just, I just loved them. You know, I, I'm not into stuff like Freddy Krueger and Jason, and Halloween 22, and, and I Know What You Did Last Summer, and Saw Part 73. Um, I, I, I'm not into movies like that, but growing up, I just really loved Dracula, um, especially the black and white Draculas. Dracula um, would be able to overcome all things in the Dracula movies that was brought against him but one thing. And that one thing that Dracula could never overcome in the movies was the cross. You can have a little four foot eight woman that weighs 95 pounds. If she had the cross, it would beat that old Dracula down. It would whip him down. If he just saw the cross, he would be like, no! No, not the cross, anything but the cross. And even before I got saved, even before I became a Christian, just watching, watching the Dracula movies, I got a little theology. Because even from watching that, I began to realize that there's power in the cross. The power so much, though, is not in the sticks that makes the cross. The power is not in the wood that makes the cross. The power is not in the metal that makes the cross or the gold that's around your neck if you have a cross on. But what makes the cross powerful is he who died on the cross. It's not, it's not the material, it's not the fabric of the cross, but what makes the cross powerful and energetic and mighty is he who died on the cross, which is our Savior our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want y'all to know that our hope is, is in what happened on the cross. Um, not the crucifix, but the cross. A crucifix has someone still on it. Um, some of you, you, you wear crucifixes without any understanding, but understand Jesus isn't on the cross anymore. Um, you, you know, that's just a little food for thought. But far too many people, as we talk about the cross, I've learned, have distanced themselves from the cross. Now, when we talk about the cross this morning, one of the things I want you to understand is that symbols have meanings. Everybody say symbols have meanings. Symbols have meanings in entertainment, in art, in music, in food. Um, you name it, symbols have a lot of meaning. Um, if you don't believe symbols have, a, have any meaning, just take a young child and let them drive by the golden arches. My son is, is 21 months old, and he already knows what the golden arches stand for. He knows the golden arches is not Hardee's. He knows that it's not Burger King. But when he sees the golden arches, he already knows it's McDonald's. Symbols have meanings, um, and, 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 and symbols are, are powerful. Um, and it, it has meaning in entertainment, art, music, food. Um, 
But even in religion, and no symbol is greater in religion than the symbol of the cross. In, in spirituality, no symbol has greater meaning than the cross. And today the cross, I've learned, have, has become, for many, no more than a fashion statement. Um, thousands wear crosses of gold and silver. Um, many beautiful decorated with even diamonds. Um, one can wear a cross. All kind of rappers wear crosses and entertainers wear crosses. Um, I was reading the other day on Wikipedia, if you don't know, the number one um, tattoo that people get when they go into tattoo parlors um, is a cross. It is the most requested thing whenever people go in to get um, a tattoo. Now, let me be a little controversial at the beginning of this message um, and, and kind of get your attention a little bit. Um, first of all, I want, I want you to know that I'm not one of those kind of preachers uh, who is against and, and who just gets up and preaches against tattoos. Whatever you do with your body, that is, that is your prerogative. That is whatever you want to do with you. That is that is as what who was it? Um, Bobby Brown is your prerogative. It's your prerogative. But one thing I want to admonish you in doing is that if you put anything on your body, you need to know why you're putting it on your body, and you need to know what it means. Don't just put a Japanese symbol on your body, and you don't even know what it means. Don't put words on your body and you don't know what it means. Don't put pictures on your body and you don't know the entomology of, behind it and you don't know the spirit behind what you're putting on your body. You need to make sure you research everything and research everything you're putting on your body to make sure you ain't putting a spirit on your flesh that you can't disconnect yourself from. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So you need to make sure you do that. I remember one time talking to somebody um, who had... Um, um, some, some either Chinese or Japanese words on their arm and you know they was like this is what it says I said well how do you know that's what it says well the tattoo person told me that's what it says I said you didn't do no research on this you could be cussing your own self out on your arm and not even know it I said you, you need to do a little research but that's just a little food for thought but, but for the cross for a lot of people it's become no more than a fashion statement but the cross is not meant to be a fashion statement. It is not to be something you just wear around your neck, but it is something that should radically change and make a huge difference in your life. It's sad even in the church. We've gotten so far away from the cross. There's not much preaching about the cross. There's not much songs about the cross. I grew up in the Baptist church, and I love my Baptist church experience, especially singing hymns. Um, we used to sing hymns all the time, and um, it's sad that we kind of gotten away from that. You know, we used to sing songs like, At the Cross, At the Cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I'm happy all the day. See, we used to sing songs like that, and you had, you had church mothers get happy. You had deacons that would be sleep the whole surface, service. They'll get happy when they heard about the cross. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I'm happy all the day. It was songs like that, y'all. You know, one of my favorite hymns is Old Rugged Cross. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. I wish I could sing it like James Moore. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cleave to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown We don't hear stuff like that no more, y'all. But the cross, yeah, I'm trying my best to sing it, y'all. The cross, it is a picture which, if received by faith, has the power to change your life. 
It is a picture that changed human history. The cross of Jesus has immeasurable power and immense promise. Because of the cross of Christ, we can have hope, faith, love, and salvation. Because of the cross of Jesus, we receive forgiveness. Because of the cross of Jesus, our lives find purpose and meaning. Because of the cross of Jesus, we are made whole. And it is in the cross we find healing and freedom. The cross of Jesus should make a radical difference in your life. And if you haven't been radically changed, you haven't stood at the foot of the cross. Glory to God. Is anybody in here today? Now, before, before I talk to y'all about the power of the cross, let me first talk to y'all. And it was the reason why we read Isaiah 53. Before we talk about the power of the cross, I want to talk to y'all about the pain of the cross. Because one thing you must understand that power always is birthed out of pain. Mm. That's a little revelation for you. The more pain God takes you through, the greater the power you will receive in your life. Whenever you experience pain in your life, whenever you experience trauma in your life, whenever you go through crisis experience in your life, you better recognize what God is trying to do. He's trying to exude some power from your life. God can take your pain and turn it into power. I told y'all Wednesday night, and I'll get, in, I get into it a little bit more in a minute. I told y'all Wednesday night, it just amazed me how Jesus was dying on the cross and he was saving lives at the same time. Some of y'all, you let what you go through keep you from helping other people. Jesus was dying and he helped the thief to get into heaven. Some of you, you go, you go through a little family turmoil and you don't want to talk to nobody. You go through a little job situation and you go into a little pity party and you go into a seclusion. You got to be able to help people while you're hurting. You, you... You, you might be struggling in your own life right now. You might be having a hard time paying your own bills right now. But while you're having a hard time, God might want, want to use you to be a blessing to somebody else. Your own, your own family, your own marriage might be on the rocks. But God might put you in a position to help somebody else. Your child might be one foot away from prison, but God might want to use you to bless somebody else's child. Your own child might need deliverance themselves, but God might want to use you to bless somebody else. You need to understand that God always puts you in a predicament to help somebody else when you're hurting yourself. God never waits until you get in a, in a good position to help somebody else. Jesus was dying on the cross, and that was, that was this, his greatest moment of ministry. Let me talk to y'all, though, about the pain of the cross because you won't understand the power of the cross until you understand the pain. When you read the prophecies of the suffering of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, especially the book of Psalms in Isaiah 50 and 53, you see the glimpse of what Jesus went through in real life for you and for me. Crucifixion was the most excruciating and horrendous form of punishment meet that, that was given to any person in the first century. Alexander the Great seems to have learned it from the Persians. The Romans even reserved crucifixion for slaves, for robbers, for assassins, and the like. Now, this is what precedes crucifixion, because a lot of times we just see crucifixion, and we don't, we don't understand what happened even before Jesus is hung on the cross. But upon receiving the death sentence, the condemned person is flogged with a leather whip loaded with metal or bone so cruel that it became known as the intermediate death. It was known as the cat of nine tails. The condemned person is required to shoulder the crossbar upon which he is to be extended and carry it to the place of his crucifixion. That same crossbar is placed on that back that had been filleted open by the cat of nine tails. Matter of fact, most people didn't even make it to the cross because they died on the whipping post. Matter of fact, historians will tell us 
historians will tell us that Jesus Christ, because of the way that he was beaten, he was beaten in such a way that he should have died while he was being beaten. The Bible said that his beard was snatched out of his face. The Bible says that out of the verse that we read, it says that, in one translation says that you couldn't even recognize that he was a man, that he was beat to a pulp. One verse says that he was beaten in such a way, to he was in such a point to where no man had anything or wanted anything to do with him. He was beaten in such a way that he should have died on the whipping post. He should have died when they placed those crown of thorns in his brow. He should have died from the four inch to the six inch thorns that went into his skull and went into his brain. But Jesus Christ, he held death at bay because if he would have died on the whipping post, he wouldn't have died on the cross. And if he wouldn't have died on the cross, we wouldn't have been delivered and saved. Jesus Christ was so much God, he had so much life in him that he was able to hold death back until he was finished with what he had came to do. He, 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 he made death sit to the side until he was ready to receive it into his life. And, 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 and condemned, condemned people, they were required to shoulder the crossbar upon which they were to extend and carry it to the place of their crucifixion. The condemned person wears around his neck a, a placard or placard naming his crime and the execution at the execution site they are stripped buck naked and tied or nailed to the crossbar and when a person is crucified it is slow the death is slow in coming and so they led Jesus to crucify him the scripture says to a place called Golgotha the crucifixion was an extremely, extremely painful way to die. It's hard to describe it. Even now, it's hard for me to describe it. The pain of the cross is unbearable. Jesus, he was scourged. He was beaten, um, spat upon, and struck with many blows. Then the, cross, um, then the cross was then placed in the ground, and his body was placed in his body was placed in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a crazy form. It was placed in a, pla in a way to where he's hanging on the cross that causes his lungs to fill up with fluids. And he was dying on the cross. As the pain become unbearable, you can push up for breath because of a bended knee. And this would decrease the pain in the upper body, but then cause more pain in the legs and the feet. And this would go on for hours and hours, and sometimes they wouldn't die for days. But remember, the agony of Jesus was much more than physical pain. It was emotional, spiritual, and mental pain as well. And the pain of the cross was, it, it was more than physical pain. Uh, because the Bible says, when the sixth hour came, darkness fell over the whole land until the ninth hour. And the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani which is translated, my God, my God, which is my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because Jesus bore our sin, even God had to turn from him. This was the worst pain of all. He was alone even without his father's help. As the Bible says, greater love hath no man than this, that he lays down his life for his friend. And because Jesus loved us, he endured the cross. If you want to know anything, if you're looking for love, if you're looking for any kind of love in this world, there's only one place you need to look, and it's at the man that hung on, hung on the cross from the sixth to the ninth hour for all of your sins and for all of mine. If you want to know where love is at, baby, look to the cross. It was his love that made him hang on the cross. It was love that kept him on the cross. It was not the wood. Don't you know it was Jesus who made the wood? It was not the, the nails that kept him on the cross. Don't you know it was God who created the metal that was in the ground that made the nails? It was love that kept him on the cross. And I'm so glad he loved me like that. And let me tell you something, and, and I knew this would be the kind of reaction, y'all. I knew that this would be the kind of laser tactical reaction that I get preaching about the cross because we don't get excited about this kind of stuff anymore. And then we wonder why we don't have no power in our churches anymore. We wonder why we don't see healing anymore. We wonder why our kids run crazy now. We wonder why we just can't keep our families together because we've gotten away from the cross. We preach more about cash than we do about Calvary. 
We preach more about success than we do about salvation. We preach more about happiness than we do about holiness because we've gotten away from the cross. But I'm telling y'all something. If we want to get back what used to be in the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we have got to get back to Calvary. We've got to get back to talking about Jesus. We've got to get to back to talking about the Son of God. We've got to get to back to talking about what Jesus did on the cross for us. We got to get back to the point where we get happy about the blood, where we get happy about the blood of Jesus Christ. We got to get back to the point where we get happy about salvation. We got to get back to the point where we're happy about what God did for us in our walk with Jesus Christ. Let me tell y'all something. Easter, you want to know why Easter is really something that's really, really explosive for me? Because let me tell you something. What is, what is this? 2016, 24 years ago, the Wednesday before Easter, Jesus Christ saved my life, y'all. And I still can recollect how God made a radical difference in my life. And let me help you out with something. If you can't remember when Jesus saved your life, you ain't even saved, baby. Because let me tell you something. If you can remember your first kiss, if you can remember your first hug, if you can remember your first, well, you know what I'm talking about. If you can remember all of that stuff, but you can't remember when God saved you, you might need to get a real relationship with God because there's nothing like when Jesus saved your life. Because when he saved your life, it changes everything. So I'm thankful to God, y'all. 24 years, 24 years, my life hasn't been the same. 24 years, my life has not been the same. I'm thankful today for salvation. Somebody give God praise for your own salvation in this house. The cross, the cross defines Christianity. It symbolizes what we believe in. I first want to give you something real quick. I want to tell you about the, central, the, the, the centrality of the cross and tell you about how it's everything for us as believers. For instance, let me, let me give an example maybe we all can understand. In football, the football determines everything. In football, the football determines everything. First downs are measured by where the ball is placed. Touchdowns are measured by whether, whether the ball crossed the plane. Out of bounds is tied to your control of the ball and its relationship to the feet of the person holding it. Fumbles are determined by who grabs the ball. Field goals are measured by whether the ball goes through the uprights. Men fight over footballs, they rejoice over it, and strive to possess it. But if a football is missing, there is no football game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all can't see Zach back there, but Zach, he back there like he's on the organ. He like, this is a good place right here to shout. But, but, because let me, let me tell you if, the, if you, if you, if you go to a football game and there's no football, you don't have a football game. And the same way it is in Christianity. If you are a Christian and we don't have the cross, we ain't got nothing. Without the cross, we don't have anything. The cross is centrality to our beliefs. It is the centrality of what we're all about. It is everything to us. And we're living in a day where we're trying to have a crossless Christianity. But even Jesus said that you must take up your cross daily. We got to have the cross. Matter of fact, on one instance, can I really preach to y'all? I don't know if y'all with me today. You know, I'm the one that didn't get no sleep this morning. I, I just slept for about an hour and a half and y'all sleeping on me and you slept all night. But, 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 but let me tell you something. Even Jesus, when, when, when there was a time when Jesus asked his disciples, he said, he said, tell me who men say that I am. And, and they said, some say that are Elijah, some say that are Jeremiah, and some say that you're this person, some say that you're that person. And Jesus said, no, you tell me who I am. Because it means nothing for, for you to tell God uh, 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 what your mama say he is. Or what your daddy say he is. You got to have a personal relationship for yourself. And some of you in here, if you ain't got the family members in your family, you ain't got nothing. You got such a false salvation to where it is, it is like Charmin toilet paper. You need to get yourself a real salvation. Jesus is like, no, you got to know me for yourself. 
The Lord is thy shepherd that shall not want. He's your shepherd. He, it's got to it's gotta be personal. He can't be your mama's shepherd, your bishop's shepherd, your pastor's shepherd. He's got to be your shepherd. Jesus said, tell me who the, who the men's, let, let, me, let me just really preach and just give y'all a month's worth of preaching right here in these 15 minutes. J Jesus said, no, tell me who men sit down. And Peter, 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 he gets his revelation. He said, thou art, th thou art Christ, the son of the living God. And, Christ, and Jesus, said, J Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. But my father, which is in heaven, he said, I give unto you the keys of heaven. And, and, and whatsoever you bind in, in, in heaven shall be bound in this earth. Whatsoever you loose in heaven shall be loosed in this earth. And so Peter, he gets that revelation. Peter, he's doing real good. He's doing real good in that part of the verse. But then about a few minutes later, Jesus, he talks to the disciples. He said that I must go to the cross. And then all of a sudden, Peter, he says, wait a minute, you can't go to the cross. I'm paraphrasing. He said, you can't go to the cross. And Jesus looks at Peter. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. Isn't it funny how people can be spiritual one minute and then an hour later, they horny as all like, giddy out? Isn't it funny how people can be real holy one night and then the next night that you don't know what you're dealing with? He, 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 tried, he, he tried to tell Jesus, he said, no, 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 you can't go to the cross. Jesus said, get thee behind me. He said, I must do this. Because the cross is centrality to us as believers. Without no cross, there is no Christianity. Ah, let me move on. The cross, it provides power. The cross provides power. I'm telling you, and I, I told you before, and I tell you again. You get your greatest power out of your greatest pain. You find me somebody who's greatly anointed, I will, I will guarantee you they had much pain in their life. Anybody who's mighty, they, they lost a loved one, they went through some hell, they, they, they went through all kind of crisis situations. Anybody that's greatly anointed, they had to go through pain. You get your power from pain. You don't just get it from fasting and praying. God takes you through pain to get the anointing from your life. The anointing comes out of the comes out of the the, the 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 comes out of the seed by being beaten. It has to be crushed to get the anointing out. And Jesus, while he's being crushed on the cross, power is coming from his life. The cross provides power. It provides power for us as believers. Let me move on. I'm just going to give you a couple more, couple more points, a few more points, and I'll be done. The next thing is the cross provides a relationship and not religion. People who try to please God without the cross, they're just being religious. And there's many people in many churches who, 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 who try to please God without the cross. That's nothing but religion. God doesn't want religion. He wants a relationship. Let me help you out with religion. Religion is anything you do for God that does not stem out of a heart that is connected to God. In other words, you serve God out of duty versus out of love. Even coming here today to church, you shouldn't be like, well, I had to be here. You should be like, I want to be here. Any, anytime I do something for my wife, it is not because I got to do it because I'm her husband. No, I do it because I want to do it because of our relationship. I don't just do it just for the sake of being a husband. And you know a man is doing stuff just for the sake of being a husband when he make comments like, well, I'm the man of the house and I'm the husband and I do it, all of this stuff. And he gives a list of all the things that he does. You know all of a sudden he ain't doing it out of relationship. He just doing it out of duty. Oh, I, that's just, that's just, that's just a little help. And women, you don't want a man that's just going to be with you out of duty. You want a man that's going to be with you out of relationship. The cross provides a relationship and not religion. Here's a couple other things. The cross displays God's surpassing greatness. 
it, it displays God's surpassing greatness. The resurrection of Jesus demonstrates God's infinite power. God raised Jesus from the dead and seated him in heavenly places. God's power that raised Christ from the dead is available to us. God has a, let me help you out with something. I'm going to say this and I'm going to move to my next point, but I feel like shouting about this. God has enough power to turn even the worst scenario in your life into victory. God has enough power to turn even the worst situation in your life into a victory. And some of you, you're crying over stuff that's messed up. You're crying over bad scenarios in your life. If you just start giving God a little bit of glory, you'll find out that the God that we serve can take even what was meant for your evil, he can take it and turn it around for your good. That's the God that I serve. God displayed his surpassing greatness. What the Romans and what the Jews and what all of those who killed Jesus, or I would say crucified him, I wouldn't say kill Jesus because you can't kill God. Jesus said, I lay down my life, no man can take it. What, what God did is he took their act and he turned it for our good. Surpassing greatness. Let me give you, let me give you something else. The cross demonstrates Christ's authority. Christ's authority. Christ has authority over everything. He has authority. Not only does he have all power, he has all authority. Now, you need to understand, there's a big difference between authority and power. Power has to do with energy. It has to do with strength. Authority is a little bit different. Let me give you an example. Let's say, for instance, you're driving down 121. And let's say you're doing 55 in a 35. State trooper pulls up behind you. You see them blue lights. I always say this. There's, there's two lights any man hates to see in his life. The check engine light and the blue lights behind you. All the real men know what if all the real men know what I'm talking about. It's nothing worse than seeing the check engine light and the blue lights coming up on behind you. Now, you get pulled over. And the person pulls up behind you. But the person that, that gets out the car is a little petite Four foot six, 95 pound woman. You are a 250 pound person, six foot three. You got more power than her, but you don't have more authority than her. Just by her showing you her badge makes you have to respect the authority. I'm preaching better than y'all saying anything today. See, not only does God have all power, Sister Denise, he also got all authority. And matter of fact, there's not a place on planet Earth that he doesn't have all authority. If you go to the highest hills, he's got all authority. If you go to the deepest valleys, he's got all authority. And Jesus, even on the cross, displayed he had all authority where does he have authority he's ha he has authority in heaven he has authority in earth and the scripture even says he has authority under the earth even the demons have to respect his authority even the devil himself has to respect his authority even though this is the devil's earth when the devil sees god walk into a room even the devil's got to back up and say wait a minute this is god's place See, that's, that's, why, that's, why, that's why you can be a believer and you can walk in environments and then all of a sudden people start acting funny, people start acting crazy. It's because it's the demons that's in people sometimes that start recognizing that authority done walked in the room, that the authority of Jesus Christ has walked in the place. And even the devil, which has got to understand that authority has came in here. Let me, let, 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 let me say this. We'll, we'll, 
We're getting, ready, we're getting ready to celebrate 19 years of ministry. 19 years of ministry. About 15 years ago, some of y'all don't know this, about 15 years ago, I came to church. I'd usually get out of church about 6.30, 7 o'clock every day, and I'd come out here just to check stuff. I'd walk around the building and make sure the building ain't been broke into. We was over in the, 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 what's the children's church now, the small building. And I walked up, and there was chicken blood all over the door. A root worker had done threw some stuff on the, on the door, had a note, had all kind of crazy stuff saying about me, had all kind of crazy stuff saying about the church, saying the church wasn't going to last, saying the church was going to die, was saying I'm going to die, I wasn't going to live to be 30, was just saying all kind of crazy stuff. Well, let me tell the devil something. I turned 40. Don't mess with me, devil. I turned 40 about six months ago. And I announced to the devil, I say, devil, I don't know what kind of root worker you sent this way, but let me tell you about our roots. We got the root of Jesse. We got the king of kings. We got the Lord of lords. And I don't care what you try to send to this church, devil. Let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost we got is so much stronger than any demon you send that way. Somebody give God praise for authority right now. Give him praise for authority. That's why the devil ain't killed you yet. That's why you haven't went down yet. That's why you didn't die in the car wreck. That's why cancer didn't kill you. God's got authority over your life. Woo! 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 I feel the devil backing up the day. I feel darkness getting scared the day. I feel demons getting afraid the day. I feel the light of God beginning to shine the day. Because when you preach about Calvary and you preach about the cross, hell's got to back up. The devil's got to flee because there's power in the cross. There's power in the cross. There's power in the cross. Woo! There's power in the cross. There's power in the cross. And let me tell you something. I don't know if you're going to ever experience a Dracula. I don't know if you're ever going to experience something like that, but let me tell you something. There's power in the cross. There's power. If you experience a demon, there's power in the cross. If you experience the devil, there's power in the cross. When you experience a sickness, there's power in the cross. When you experience cancer, there's power in the cross. When you experience heart disease, there's power in the cross. When your family is going through, there's power in the cross. Devil, there's power in the cross. There's power in the cross. There's power. There's wonder working power. There's wonder working power. There's wonder working power. There's wonder working power in the power of the cross. Woo! Woo! Somebody give God a big praise right there. Come on, just get, we don't need an organ. Give him praise. You don't need help, give him praise. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, you can praise him in your kitchen. You can praise him in your living room. You can praise him in your Toyota. Give God praise right there. Give him praise. There's power, there's power, there's power. There's power, there's power in the cross. Woo! What delivered me, it was the cross. What saved us, it was the cross. What healed us, it was the cross. It was the cross of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. Let me share this and I'm going to be done. Play that break. Chain, real soft, real soft. Listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read one verse, and I need y'all to help me with something. Deacon Steve, can you come help me with something? Just, just hold it right here in front of the pulpit. 
just just stand it right there. I want to I want to read something. Colossians 2. I need everybody to stand with me. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Colossians 2 and 13 and 14 says something that's real powerful. I, I saw this this morning. It says this. It says, I want you to see the power of the cross. You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins. Not some, but he forgave all our sins. Verse 14 is what I want you to really get. He canceled the record. Mm. He canceled the record of the charges against us. He dropped every charge against you. He dropped every charge against me. And took it away by nailing it to the cross. He took everything you went through, everything you did, everything you're doing, everything you're going to do, he canceled the record of it. And when Jesus was on the cross, it died on the cross with him. It died on the cross with him. And, and so God, he, he, he said, you know what? I want the people to see really what happened. God said... I want you to give every person in church a post-it note, and I want them to write their name on it. And I want them to put their name on the cross. I need some help. Once you get your name, once you get your name, take some over there. Once you write your name, I want you to come in, I want you to stick it on this cross. I want you to remind the devil that all your charges have been dropped. I want you to remind the devil of the power of the cross. I want you to remind the devil that 2,000 years ago on Calvary, your sins have been forgiven. And I want you to have a, a visual picture. I want you to have a visual picture of what Christ has done for you. I want you to see it. I want us to see it. I want us to see that it was nailed to the cross. Everything you did was nailed to the cross. Everything you did was nailed to the cross. Everything you did was nailed to the cross. I don't care who you are. It's on the cross. I don't care what you've done. It's on the cross. 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 Get your name on the cross. Get your name on the cross. Get your name on the cross. Church, your name is on the cross. Make it stick the best if it can. If it don't stick, that's fine. The top, the top of it is the sticky part. We'll get tape. We'll, we'll get it on there. It's on the cross. It's on the cross. It's on the cross. If we got to get somebody to go in my office, get tape. It's on the cross. I need the worship team to help me. It's on the cross. It's on the cross. It's on the cross. It's on the cross. My sins have been washed away. My sins have been washed away. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. 
the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power.
There's nothing like something that gets the devil nervous like preaching about the cross. I want to tell everybody in here something right now. The devil, he's afraid. The devil's a, he's scared right now. Did, did it just stop? The music just stopped. It just stopped. That's fine. The devil is super afraid right now. You want to know why? Because he know every time you talk about the cross, salvation is near. He knows that right now somebody is on the cusp of making a decision that would change their life forever. The devil, the devil fought tooth and nail for me not to preach this message this morning. Because he knows that there's power in the cross. I want to tell somebody in this room something. This might be your last opportunity to get your life together. And if you're in here, you're not saved, you don't need no music, we don't need, you don't need no music, no gimmicks, no prophecy whatsoever. If you're not right with God, you know, if you're eight years old, if you're 80 years old, and you know you need to get right with God, I'm not going to beg you, I'm not going to plead with you. But one thing I won't do. One thing I won't do is sit here and play games with you when your soul is at stake. If you're not saved today or if you're backslidden, this might be your only opportunity to slide back right with God. You in your 20s, you in your 30s, you in your 40s, how long you going to put God off? You a teenager in here, how long you going to put him off? It ain't nothing cool about trying not to be spiritual. Your soul is at stake. You're a, sing, you're, you're a single father, you're a single mother, and, and you know you need Jesus. This is your moment. So I don't know who you are, but I, I have a warrant for your soul. I have a warrant for your soul for you to get right with God. And without the help of any music, any singing. If you know you're in this place, you need Jesus, you know you need him, I want to call you to this altar now without any reservation. I'm not going to do it long, but I'm just going to give you the opportunity now so that your name just won't be on this cross, but your name will be in the roll of heaven. So if you're here, and you know you need Jesus, you need to come now. Hell doesn't want you to do it. Satan doesn't want you to do it. But you need to come now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Well, listen, if there's none, let's give God a big praise right now. Come on, give him praise right now, people. Come on, give him praise. Come on, we can do a little bit better than that. Give him praise. Well, how many of y'all glad for the power of the cross? I hope you look at a cross in a different way. You got a cross on around your neck. I, I hope you look at it as something different. I hope you look at it as something not just a fashion statement. I was, I was, I think it was Cat Williams. I was looking at a video he, he made the other day. And he was talking about how he got beat up or didn't get beat up in a, in a club. And he started bragging about these chains that he had on his neck and that the people that didn't beat him up, they didn't get the chain. And on one of the chains, he had a cross and I said to myself 
What good does it mean to have a cross around your neck and you don't have it in your heart? What good does it mean to have millions of dollars you spent on the cross and you don't have it in your heart? God is not about outward adorning. He's not about outward religion. He's about an inward transformation and a change. And that's what God wants. Come on, somebody, give God praise today for the cross. Come on, give him praise today for the cross. High five three people real quick and tell them there's power in the cross. There's power in the cross. This is what we're about. There's power in the cross. There is power in the cross. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Listen, y'all can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Deke. You can, if you want to come, you can come lay that over here. Glory to God. The devil don't like that picture right there, boy. Glory to God. Devil don't like that. You're watching. You should make you a cross in your room right now and write your name on it. <laughs> and let the devil know you've been forgiven. Listen, y'all, y'all blessed by the word today. Give God praise. Listen, let's prepare our hearts to give. We're going to give, we're going to sow, and we're going to be out of here. Okay, um, this week, of course, is spring break for Union County. Um, they, for, for the, all the Zumba queens that are in the church, um, there will be Zumba this week, but it's going to be at the LB, the Lake Butler Elementary School cafeteria. So if you are a Zumba queen or if you'd like to be a part of what they do, uh, Zumba will take place this week on Tuesday and Thursday only um, at 6 p.m. at the elementary school cafeteria. So keep that in mind as well. Um, the rehearsal, we're going to rehearse for about, um, for the kids that are going to be a part of the Easter, um, um, we want to do one quick run through just one song after church. Um, is that what y'all going to do? We're going to do it right in here. Okay, so you just need people to go out to the, ca the cafe. You go out to the cafe, get you some pig feet and some um, um, pickles and, and, and all the other stuff we got out there, some nachos. And the kids are going to rehearse in here, so kind of just keep that in mind. Um, they're going to do that after service, all right? Um, and, and, yes, that please, please, please go um, hit the cafe. Um, listen, um, I think that is all we got. We, we will be here for Wednesday night. Oh, man, who in here you got, last week you got eggs? Who in here last week you got some of the eggs we gave away? Was they all good? Well, we got nine more flats of eggs. Is it, it's seven? Oh, okay. So some people don't, some people don't rate them already? <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll cut them um, like we did last week. Um, let people get a dozen of eggs. Y'all want to, I think they're brown eggs again. So um, we had some people come by and sow some more eggs into the ministry. So we have them in the children's church. So if a, a couple guys can help bring the eggs over, we'll bring them up front. We can kind of dip in, split them up for those that would like um, to get some. All right. Listen, let's stand to our feet. We're going to prepare our hearts to give. Um, if you like to sow with your credit or debit card, don't forget you can do that in the lobby. Um, you can do it with. Um, Sister LaShonda, so keep that in mind as well at the reception desk. Make sure you take full advantage of that. If you're watching, you'll like to give online. You can do that too as well. Just click on give online right on the website, and you can sow right on there. So uh, we're grateful to God for you. Um, listen, I know we kind of, I'm kind of going back and forth. And y'all give it up for Zach um, over here on the drums, y'all. A lot, of, a lot of times people, they don't know how hard it is playing, especially with a track. 
and uh, he's doing a good job, and um, I'm telling you, it's really hard playing the track, but he's doing an excellent job with that. Um, I thank God for technology. I'm going to try to figure this out. <laughs> I had a sheet. Yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it. All right, y'all ready to give? All the late Butler kids, y'all ready for spring break? Well, I, I guess so, I guess so. All right, well, let's lift our offerings to the Lord, everybody. Let's make this declaration. With this seed, you shall meet all of my needs. My giving is an act of my worship. Now, and my love to God. You shall use the seed to reach this community, this city, this county, this state, this country, and this world. Today I decree that every curse on my family is broken, every spell on my family is stopped, every disease on my family is healed because of the seed that I sow. Today I declare that I am blessed. I am blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give unto the Lord with a happy heart. Here we go, everybody. Lord, I lift. Save us. I'm so glad you came to save us. Come on, let's say that again. Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift your name. 